Hey, what's up, Lando? Uh, this is a quick demo video for you for your Fallen um, that Benji Graham over at Nerf Herder Customs weathered, and it looks amazing. He did an amazing job on it. I know you've seen his video on it, uh, lots of pictures, but you know, now it's my turn. Uh, I just got this thing, and it is amazing. Uh, every single detail, you know, down to the brass rods and the wires, the little, the tiny little wires that you've got coming out of each of these greeblies here on both sides. I mean, this thing looks phenomenal. Um, so I tried my hand at installing it. Um, I installed it with a Profi V2. This is a two button setup. So what you've got here is you've got your main activation switch and then you've got your auxiliary switch down here below. So on your main activation switch, don't, don't be afraid to press it hard. You need to press it hard and um, it, it works, okay? Um, the switches are just not right up against the bottom of the switch housing. You just need to press it hard and it'll turn right on. Um, same with the active or the auxiliary. Uh, I did install it with CC Sabers LED pixels here. So those are those are nice. Um, we got an extra pixel here at the end of the chassis. So let's open it up and talk about how we locked in this chassis for a minute. Because there is a trick to it. So you've got a removable battery system right here. So uh, on this side, actually, it says Nerf Herder Customs in Arabesh. Over here, it says Solo Savers, and then Benji and I both are uh, in Smuggler's Outpost. So you got a Smuggler's Outpost emblem right here on the bottom of the chassis. Um, I did put an extra cap on the end of the chassis past the speaker where I put uh, one single NeoPixel here so that I could light up the holes in the pummel here that you'll see here in a second. Um, and it works out really well. So um, with this chassis, I did line it up correctly. So when this is screwed all the way in, this bent piece up is facing up. Your square pieces are facing to the side or front and back. Um, I did back that up a little bit and then I did adhese it down. You and I had talked about that before. I, I needed a little bit of extra room to get this NeoPixel in the back here. And so I did that by um, unscrewing this just a few threads and then I just locked it in place so that you wouldn't have to worry about it in the future. Um, to get to your board, okay you do have access to your micro usb right here so you can hook up a micro usb cable and not pull this chassis out but if you want to put any sound fonts or anything on your sd card you are going to have to pull this chassis out and the way i did that is um, these two greeblies right here they're both adhesed on with e6000 so you could take each of them off if you wanted to but to get the chassis you only need to take the bottom one off so what we want to do, from, I'm considering the bottom, like from the bottom of the board, right? So right where this emblem is, Smuggler's Outpost emblem, you want to take that one off. So you just pull it off. What you'll see is there's going to be three set screws underneath this guy. The first two that are on this side, and they're black anodized, they're to hold in this coupler, and you don't need to take those out. Um, the one that's going to be all the way over here on this side, that's silver, that is uh, that goes all the way through to the chassis and that's actually your chassis retention set screw. So you will need to back that up a little bit and then you can slide this chassis out enough to mess with your board. This chassis, there's enough wire slack to pull it all the way out to where your board is fully exposed. But once you get to the back of the board, stop. And then you can pull up your board, you can get to your SD card, you can do anything you want and then you wanna make sure when you put it back and you slide it all the way back. There's a lip on this chassis. It stops where it needs to, but you wanna make sure that it's lined up properly with um, the top of the battery is lined up with this greebly and it's lined up with uh, this activation switch and it's all one straight line. And that's how you line your switches up. So your spring in here is gonna be the negative side of your battery. You don't ever wanna put your battery in backwards. So just remember that. Um, I know there's, there's some wires here and you can't really see it very well in the uh, video, but there's a wire channel in here that those all run through so it doesn't interfere with your battery. Um, your battery sits right over top of them. Um, spent quite a bit of time on this chassis. This is a PLA printed chassis, but I spent quite a bit of time trying to make this look very nice. Uh, I think the Arabesh came out nice and clean. Um, looks good, you know, feels good, looks good. Let's throw a battery in. <clears throat> so remember, spring side, you're negative. Now this battery fits in here super tight. 
Um, I do that so it doesn't rattle around. It doesn't come off of the battery, uh, the positive battery nipple right there. Uh, if you were to bounce this on the floor or on the, on the wall, I just make it to where that, that battery is just locked in place. So because of that, you're going to need a little tool to take that battery out. And we'll go over that here in a second. But let's, uh, so we put the battery in, right? Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and put the handle on. You'll feel that it's snug, but it does go over the battery and it, the handle screws right on. So we'll do that right now. A couple threads on here, no biggie. And once I lock this in, I'll tighten it up and then you can see how that piece sticks up and it's in line with the activation switch. So kind of like what Benji was talking about on his video, where you wanted this lined up properly. If this was on display and the activation was pointed up, this bent piece would be up. Your square greeblies right here would be facing front and back. So everything is good there. So I just hit the power button. Nice shine through on your pommel, right? It's looking real good there. You can you can really see where all all of the holes are. CC LED pixels are working good. Smooth swing. We'll twist off. We're gonna tap our auxiliary to change sound fonts. We just changed them. So I'll let you know when you get in here to add your own sound fonts or whatever it is you're gonna do. I put your config on the SD card. So you know exactly what I used um, and how I used it. Now uh, for setting this up, I made this uh, pixel back here just mirror what's going on with the blade, but it is wired separately. So it's technically a separate blade, right? So you'll have, it, um, on each one of your uh, sound fonts in your config, you're gonna have two blade styles. One's gonna be your main blade and then one right underneath it. You can program this back LED to do whatever you wanna do. All right, so the last time we hit the activation switch, um, this time we're gonna do motion controls. Uh, I've got a little one inch diameter test blade that we're gonna use. I'm not gonna use your blade retention, which is right here because this is a very tight fit. Um, if you have a new blade, you're going to find yourself sanding that blade to fit in here. So just be aware of that. So motion controls. Shine through. This thing is loud, right? It sounds nasty. Flash on flash. You tap in the auxiliary. Holding it down. It just sounds nasty. And then we twist off. That's exactly how you want it to sound. So we'll tap the activation again, and then this time we're into the stock fonts. All right. We'll just cycle through a few of them. Solid blue. bit of an unstable right but you can see that in your pommel as well you can see that really well in your pommel right nice and green nice white blade we'll do a few more this is a nice one effect to see Hopefully, I'm sure you can see that, right? Smooth gray. Purple. Smooth fuzz. Now we use the activation switch this time. 
Man, I got kind of like a rainbow. And we'll get back to the beginning. This is kind of my favorite font right now. I know it's a little bit lengthy before the blade starts up, but I like it. Right? I mean, that's just, that's just awesome. So, that's everything on your saber. Now, I'll show you how to take the battery out. It's real easy. I just want to show you one time on the video. That way, you're not trying to guess on how to do it. So, what I'll do is I'll just take this handle off. I've got a pair of tweezers that have a rubber coating, but if you have like a thick guitar pick or something like that, anything will work. One of those Lego pieces that help you get the Lego bricks apart. You know, basically you're just looking for something strong and thin like that. And if it's metal, be very careful not to touch the, the metal positive terminal. But we just come in here, pop the battery right out. And just like that. And then we'll put the handle back on it. But, uh. Anyway, that is your saber. I uh, hope it turned out the way you like. Let me know if you got any questions. And if not, I will uh, hopefully drop this off tomorrow if uh, the post office is open on Christmas Eve. Thanks, buddy.